Hi everyone, welcome to my 2024 minimalist makeup collection. This is a nostalgic video for me because it was the first real video on my channel back in 2022. And I can't wait to show you how my collection has evolved. I have 14 pieces to talk about. Seven of them are different than last year. Seven are the same. So I'm gonna go through category by category, the order of which I put my makeup on my face. And let's just hop into the first one, which is coverage. So I have four products in this category and let's start first with my concealers. First up is the same product as last year's collection, not actually the same two, but the same product itself. And it is my NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer, and I have it in the shade Custard. It's supposed to be a multi-purpose concealer that brightens, corrects, and perfects for up to 16 hours with a creamy, medium to buildable coverage and natural radiant finish. And if you've been around my channel at all, you know how I feel about this concealer. I agree with those claims. I think it's absolutely fantastic. It's the best concealer that I have ever used and in the best shape that I've ever found for my skin tone. It really is that medium buildable coverage, so it's the perfect sweet spot for me that can take me from, you know, everyday makeup to something quite glam. I do find it really creamy, easily blendable, and it works both under my eyes and on like acne spots or scars. So it's quite a versatile concealer. So you might be surprised why I have two to mention. And to be honest, the reason why I am experimenting with other concealers is because this one is just so expensive. I don't mind spending a lot of money on something like a powder that's gonna last me quite some time, but concealers I run through so, so quickly, and this one doesn't have a lot in the tube. There's only six milliliters in it. So I'm just trying to find a more affordable option nowadays, so in comes my second concealer. This one is obviously new since last year, and it is the Rare Beauty Liquid Touch Brightening Concealer, and I have it in the shade 200C. So this is supposed to be a moisturizing, buildable concealer concealer that melts seamlessly into the skin for undetectable cake-free coverage. So yes, this Rare Beauty definitely is a more affordable option, but I don't like it quite as much as the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. It's still good, don't get me wrong. I was actually pretty impressed by this concealer overall, but to me it's not the perfection of the NARS. So what do I like about it? It's actually very creamy, even creamier than the NARS, so it's easier to blend out. It's very brightening. There was a huge shade range, so I could pick something that was so similar to the shade Custard. And it does seem to have some buildability as well, although I wouldn't say the coverage is quite as high as the NARS. So what do I not love about this product? Well, the outside packaging is absolutely gorgeous. Like, would you look at that? That's absolutely stunning. But the inside packaging, AKA the doe foot applicator, I do not like. I don't quite understand it. It's like this strange triangle and it's not my preferred, you know, doe foot. So that's just a small thing that I don't like. But the bigger thing is I find it looks a little bit cakey. I know it says it's supposed to be cake free, but for me, it does kind of settle into my fine lines a little bit more than the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. So that's it for the Rare Beauty Concealer. But now let's mention why I actually have two in my collection. This is something I would never do. These are filling the exact same role you know, medium buildable concealers. So I am absolutely doubling up. And as a minimalist, I would only ever have one of these types of concealers in my collection. But my NARS is almost done. Like it is seeing its final days. And I couldn't help myself but to open the Rare Beauty and test it out, and test it out I did. So for now, I have two concealers, but this is double as much as I would usually have. So next up for coverage, we have powders to talk about, and I have two in my collection. Let's start first with the one that is unchanged from last year's collection, and that is my Laura Mercier Translucent Loose Setting Powder. So this is supposed to be a lightweight, easy to apply loose powder that blends effortlessly to set makeup for up to 16 hours of wear and 24 for our shine control. And honestly, this powder is absolutely amazing. I also personally find it has blurring effects to the skin. It kind of makes me look like I have like an airbrush filter where I put the powder. And if you've been around my channel for a while, you know that I actually stopped using foundation because of this product specifically. I found I was using foundation to mattify certain areas of my face. So I just ditched the foundation and went to a loose setting powder instead. And it did the trick. So now my natural skin can shine through, but I'm matte where I want to be. So this product is just super finely milled, extremely smooth. Like I said, it does have those blurring qualities and it is just really, it's worth the hype. It is absolutely worth the hype. 
I love this product so, so much. So again, then you might be asking yourself why I have a second powder to talk about, which of course is new since last year's collection. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Setting Powder, and I have it in the shade Fair. It's supposed to be an ultra fine setting powder that blurs imperfections and visibly reduces shine. And it's supposed to have medium coverage with a natural finish. So my friends, when I first got this powder, I was like, the internet has been lying to me. <laughs> They've been lying to me. Why does everyone like this? I didn't understand the hype whatsoever. But the more I used it, the more I fell in love. To me, it's not that similar to the Laura Mercier. The Laura Mercier really packs a punch, especially with that loose formulation. The Charlotte Tilbury is like a lot more delicate, a lot more soft. And even though airbrush is in the name, I actually don't find that it blurs quite as much as the Laura Mercier. But what I really love about this powder is its versatility. It can go anywhere on my face, including, yes, I'm gonna say it, my under eyes. I have set my under eyes one time <laughs> ever, I think. And it was for my literal wedding day. So I am shocked that this one can actually go under my eyes without looking, you know, cakey. And the more I used it, I actually found the more natural finish more flattering than the Laura Mercier on me. It, again, was more intense of a look. This one didn't mattify quite as much. And for someone with dry skin, I think that that was actually pretty nice. I think it was just so different that I was a little like, ah, I was expecting them to be the exact same product. But no, this one is different and I like it for its differences. So why did I purchase another product when I love the Laura Mercier? Well, the truth is I wanted a pressed powder. The loose formulation was starting to really bother me. It got all over the place. And honestly, I was done with my 100 point little perk, you know, Laura Mercier powders. So I was interested in trying something new as well. So in comes this perfect mini press powder. And yeah, I've actually been really happy with the Charlotte Tilbury product. So similarly to the concealers, you might be asking, okay, but why do you need to? And the flat answer is I absolutely do not. This Laura Mercier powder is on its last legs. It has just a tiny bit left. So I went and preemptively bought a new pressed powder. And again, I couldn't help myself. I just wanted to try it out so badly. So I've been using this one fairly frequently. But again, this is double the product I need. In my minimalist collection, I absolutely would only need one. And for the makeup styles that I'm doing right now, I actually would opt more towards the Charlotte Tilbury than the Laura Mercier. So that is it for coverage. And now we're moving on to the next category, which is cheeks. I have four cheek products to talk about and I'm so excited because there's a lot of change in this category. So first up is a new product. Last year I was using the Glossier Cloud Paint and this year it's the Tarte Maneater Blush. So the full name I think is the Tarte Maneater Satin Blush Cheek Plum and I have it in the shade Buff. It's supposed to be a lightweight liquid blush that gives a satin flush with a visible plumping effect. So let's talk first about what this product does in my collection. So I don't see it as a blush necessarily. I actually see it as a hybrid between a blush, a bronzer, and a highlight. This is my everyday cheek product. The reason why I changed from the Glossier is because that was a matte product. There was no like highlighting, iridescent effect to it. And this one definitely has a bit of a shine. So this color buff is absolutely perfect for me. It's a big reason why I went to the Tarte Maneater product because I found this shade that definitely acts as that perfect midpoint between my blush, bronzer, and highlight. And for more of an everyday look, I do prefer something cream or liquid, and I prefer it to just be one product, so it's super, super quick. And my friends, I love this product. I'm actually genuinely surprised that not more people are talking about this. It is so good. First of all, the product's beautiful. It has a great applicator. It's quick to use. It's not finicky whatsoever. It's very easily blendable. It just melts into the skin. It's just so good. But there's only one downside to this product for me, and that is that it's pretty heavily fragranced in my opinion, which I don't tend to prefer, but it's honestly such a good product that I don't mind making a bit of a concession in that area. Oh, and I don't really notice that my cheeks look plumper like it claims to. It, maybe they could, but it's not like 
like a noticeable difference, at least on me. So that is my, you know, one and done everyday product. Let's move on now to my powders. So first up is my blush, which is different than last year. Last year I was using the NARS Zen blush, which I love, but it's been discontinued and it went to a really good home. My sister is loving it. So in comes a new blush, which is the Sephora Collection Colorful Blush. I have it in the color 52, which is called Self Made, and it's supposed to be an intensely pigmented blush with a super fine texture. So I really wanted to purchase a mini blush. I find it takes me forever to go through powders, but there was nothing matte and mini that suited my needs. So I went to the next smallest blush that was quite inexpensive, and honestly, this one is really, really good. I don't like my blush colors too intense, and this one's really nice because it does have a little bit of pinkiness, but it's much more muted than like a bright pink. So it adds a little flush to the cheek, but nothing too overwhelming. It also claims to be an intensely pigmented blush, and I wouldn't say it's like too intense, but it's certainly impactful. It's actually a really nice product. I don't have too much more to say about this other than it just, it works. It works really well. It's a beautiful blush. It's very easily blendable. I think it's pretty easy to use and I really like it. So yeah, that's my blush that I have in my minimalist makeup collection. Moving on to bronzer now. This is the same one as last year. This is my NARS Laguna bronzer. So this one's supposed to be an iconic powder bronzer that creates instant warmth and a long wearing natural looking glow. My goodness, do I ever agree with those claims? That's actually exactly what it does. It is a very beautiful product. I love it so much. The only thing about this one in particular is it does have a bit of a shimmer and I prefer my powder blush and bronzer to not have any shine to it. I like to bring that in with my highlight. So that's the only thing that doesn't work for this bronzer for me in particular, but if you're someone who likes a little bit of sheen, Oh my gosh, this bronzer is so, so good. It's popular for a reason. It's a really nice tone on me. It adds a bit of warmth without looking orangey. It's easy to blend. It's finely milled. It's just a really good product. It's a great bronzer. Now I will be switching things up in the future because as you can see, this one's pretty much done and I like a matte bronzer. So you'll just have to wait and see what comes next in the bronzer category in my minimalist makeup collection. And speaking of adding in shine, here comes the fourth and final product to talk about in my cheek category, and it is new in comparison to last year's collection. Last year I was using the NARS Fort de France highlighter, which I absolutely love, but I switched things up because that one irritated my son's skin. So in comes the Hourglass Ambient Strobe Lighting Powder, and I have it in the shade Incandescent. So this is supposed to be an illuminating strobing powder designed to sculpt the face with light, creating depth and dimension for a refined, natural looking highlight. And yep, this is an amazing powder, <laughs> like really good. Hourglass knows what they're doing when it comes to their powder formulations. It is just so buttery, soft, so finely milled. It doesn't feel quite like any powder I've ever used. It does add just like a little bit of a sheen. It's a very natural looking highlight, which I I much prefer. It's very easy to apply. It doesn't highlight any texture or anything going on with my skin. And it's just a beautiful lit from within looking highlight in a powder, which is fairly rare. Now there's only one problem with this highlight. I bought it online and I actually don't love the color on me. It's slightly too icy. When I looked at it in the pan, it looked a little more yellowy to me. I thought it was gonna be a little more champagne-y, but it actually is a little more cool toned than I would tend to prefer. So I wouldn't say it's like the most perfect shade match for my fairly warm skin, but it's still definitely usable and I really do love this product. So that is my highlighting product and that rounds out the entire cheek category. So next up in my makeup routine, I would typically do my eyeshadow, but I have completely eliminated that from my collection. I had the NARS Voyageur, just like mini eyeshadow palette last year, but I have since decluttered that because I've just made the realization that I'm not an eyeshadow kind of person and I just tend to use my blush, bronzer, and highlight as eyeshadow. So let's just scoot along then to the next category, which is brows. So I have two products to talk about for brows. Let's start off first with my brow pencil. This one is not new. It's the exact same product that I was using last year and it is my NYX Micro Brow Pencil in the shade Ash Brown. And it's an ultra fine micro pencil with strong strong precision for naturally filled in brows. And my friends, if you are looking for a more affordable alternative to some of the brow products on the market, this 
is your go-to. It's truly amazing. It does have an ultra-fine tip, which I prefer because it can easily create hair-like strokes. It's quite a stiff formula in the sense that you're not gonna deposit too much color and get a blocky brow, but it's not too stiff where you're not getting any color out at all. This shade was perfect on me for so many years when I was blonde, but now you can see that my hair is a little bit darker, so the shade match isn't quite as good. My eyebrows look a little lighter than my hair, but it's still, it's still good enough. You know, it's just, it's good solid packaging. It's a good solid product. This will not steer you wrong, this NYX Micro Brow Pencil. So very, very good product and extremely affordable. And next up is my brow gel or pomade to talk about. And this is the Glossier Boy Brow and I have it in the shade Brown. This is supposed to be a volumizing gel pomade that quickly and visibly thickens, conditions, and grooms brows into place without stiffening or flaking. Again, this product is just so good. It's really, really good. It does everything it claims to, other than maybe conditioning my brows. It might be conditioning my brows, it's just not noticeably so. But it deposits just enough product, at least for me, for my, you know, smaller eyebrows. It has a very small applicator, which I much prefer. If you had big bushy eyebrows, I don't think actually you would like this applicator, but perfect on me. And it just like beefs up your eyebrow hairs. I'm not quite sure how to describe it otherwise. It makes them look thicker, a little more intense, but not caked on, not stuck in one direction. It's a very like soft, lived in look. So it's a great brow product. The only issue for me is the shade. I haven't quite found a good shade match for me yet in this range. Brown is just a little too light and a little too warm toned for me. Again, still looks pretty good, but with my darkening hair, it's just, it's not the perfect shade match for me. But yeah, other than that, great product and I see why so many people like it. Okay, so we are moving on from brows to the next step in my makeup routine and that is the eye area. And I have two products in that category, the first of which is an eye liner. This one is the same as last year's collection and it is my NYX retractable eyeliner in the shade black. So this one is supposed to be renowned for its extreme lasting power and the creamy liner delivers intense pigmentation and precise application in an easy twist up tube that never needs sharpening. So I've chatted about this before. That's why I choose retractable liners. I don't prefer to have a sharpener on hand. Plus I find their formulations tend to be a little bit creamier. So let's chat about this one in particular because I've kind of changed my opinion as time has gone on with this eyeliner. It's still good, especially for the price. It is very creamy. It's very black, very blendable. But I think it claimed to have like intense lasting power. And the more I use this product, the more I don't think that's the case, at least for me. I used to have multiple eyeliners in my collection, including a liquid, and I didn't get as much use out of this stick. Now this is my only eyeliner, and the more I use it, the more I find it does tend to not last quite as long as I would like it to. So yeah, still a good product, but I think I would try for something with a little more lasting power, especially if this is gonna be the only eyeliner in my collection. All right, next up is mascara, and this is new in my collection since last year. This is the Too Faced, BTS mascara, that's what I'm gonna call it. And I have it in the shade black. So this is supposed to be a conditioning mascara with a formula that thickens, lengthens, and locks in curl for dramatic lashes with extreme volume. So last year, I believe I was using the Lancome Lashy Doll Mascara. Fine mascara, good for like an everyday look, but not really my cup of tea. This Too Faced one should theoretically be my cup of tea because that description is exactly what I am looking for in a mascara. But I find this one smudges just a tiny little bit. Now, interestingly enough, this was gifted to me, by the way, this was gifted to me. I had wanted to try this mascara again because I used it years and years ago, but I remember it flaking on me. But so many people have hyped up this mascara and honestly, a lot of my followers have recommended this mascara, so I wanted to give it another try. And it just so happens that this one was gifted to me, so I was really excited to use it. But interestingly enough, it hasn't flaked on me at all. I find it smudges just a tiny little bit. Now, not enough to prevent me from wearing it, to prevent me from 
from using this, you know, entire, well, it's mini, but this entire tube, but enough for it to not be my perfect mascara, even though I do really like the effect. It is volumizing, it is lengthening, it's a nice dramatic look, which I prefer for my mascara because I have like six eyelash hairs. So I do really like the effect, but yeah, that tiny little smudging piece just means that it's not my holy grail. All right, so that was it for the eye category, and we are moving on swiftly to the last one, which is lips, and I have two products to talk about here. So first up in my lip routine would be my lip liner, and this one's nothing new. It's the same as last year. This is my NYX Retractable Lip Liner in the shade Nude, and it's supposed to be a creamy, richly pigmented liner and an easy twist-up pencil that's renowned for its staying power. And I've already mentioned this on my channel, but when it comes to lips specifically, I prefer a lip liner as my lipstick. It's a compact, tiny product that's easy to use, easy to pack with me. I just much prefer it. Because it's retractable, I find the formula creamy enough where it's easy to apply, but not so creamy that it's just gonna disappear off your lips in a little bit. The lasting power is actually quite good. And it's just a great product easy to apply, very blendable, really creamy, absolutely lovely. Now the only thing about this is again the shade. I find it a little bit too peachy for me these days. I want to find something with a little bit more of a pinky tone, a little bit less of that oranginess. Something that basically matches my lip color almost exactly and this is very close. This nude color is close but I do find it leans a little peachy. So next up I'll try to find something that matches my my lip color a little bit better but in general this product is really great and it's also a very affordable option so let's chat now about the last product and it's a banger it's a good one and that is my lip gloss which is new in my collection from last year last year I was using the Glossier lip gloss which is chef's kiss very very good but it was in a translucent shade and this time I just wanted to switch it up and get something that had color. So this is the Tower 28 Shine On Lip Jelly in the shade Pistachio. So this is supposed to be a non-sticky moisturizing lip gloss for soft, shiny lips. So I had heard good things about this lip gloss and it actually was a bit more affordable than some other options. So I decided to give it a try and my goodness, is it perfect. It's not sticky whatsoever. It has a really nice shine and a nice effect to the lip. It does actually seem to be fairly moisturizing, which is nice because sometimes I find lip glosses quite drying. And one of the best things is this shade in particular, this pistachio shade, I swear, is my exact lip color. It is the perfect shade for me. Now I do really love this product, but there is one small downside. I don't love the applicator. The outside packaging, absolutely gorgeous, so pretty, but the doe foot applicator, you really have to get off a lot of product first before you use it. But anyway, it's just a very, very minor thing for overall a product that I really, really like. It is oh so good. So my friends, that's it for my lip collection, but that actually rounds out my entire minimalist makeup collection. And we had a total of 14 items in this makeup collection. And my friends, this is pretty close to the norm. I think in the coverage <laughs> category, I have a little bit more than usual, but in general, this is pretty close to the most minimal I will get with my makeup collection. And to be honest, my collection's been getting smaller and smaller over the years. I think even just last year, I had 18 products in my collection, but I'm actually more satisfied with less. I feel more excited about putting on makeup than I did last year and even the year before. So by and large, I feel like I'm really hitting my stride, both with the the types of products I'm buying and the number of items that I have. But that being said, some of the products aren't perfect for me and I also am just in a phase where I want to try some new things. So you'll be seeing a lot more new items in my minimalist makeup collection in the future. Also, this video isn't super detailed on why I have selected the items that I have. That'll be a whole other video if you're interested in like my makeup formula and the intention behind these makeup pieces. I also want to make a point that this is going to look very different than other minimalist makeup collections that you see online. 
In some senses, it could be much, much larger, and in others, it might be a lot smaller. This is just what feels right to me. This is my version of minimalism, and everyone's is going to be different. So yes, I do consider this a minimalist makeup collection, but I'm also a makeup lover, and I wear makeup fairly frequently, so it might not be as reduced as some other collections you may see. It's all meant to be completely personalized and tailored to what you like, as my collection is for me. So as always, I hope that you enjoyed coming along on this video and seeing how my makeup has evolved year after year. These are some of my favorite videos to film, and of course, I hope that you like them too. If you did happen to like it, then feel free to give it a like. If you like me, if you like the content that I'm producing on this channel in general, then definitely consider subscribing. It would truly mean the world to me. All right, everyone, I will just thank you so much for being here, and I really hope to catch you in my next minimalism video. Bye for now, everyone. Bye.